All right, we'll let give it a couple more minutes for people to join in. Um, the agenda for today is fairly straightforward. I'm going to go over the, I'm going to review the requirements for your final project for, you know, turning it in. Just to make sure that you dot all the I's and cross all the T's. Okay. And then I will go over the last problem from the practice exam, from the exam we were looking at last time. Um, as well as talking about other concerns that were with regards to grading and the like. Okay. So, um, yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. So let me open up Canvas. Okay, not too many people joining in. All right. So today we are going, so let's go ahead and talk about the final project first and then we're going to review the, then we'll talk about final grades in general, and we'll talk about the, uh, and then we'll finish up a review of the final exam. Sound good to everybody? All right. So first off, final, so be sure to turn in your progress report if you haven't already. Okay, um, so final project. So um, your submission is a URL. Um, or text entry, media recording, file load, you can uh, upload all those things here. But in general, you need to have a URL to your video. You can upload that to YouTube uh, or submit your code here or via GitHub, but you'll need a link to the GitHub, you know, since it's gotta be on GitHub, right? So you wanna get, a so you can turn in also copy here. Um, but your uh, yeah, I can talk to people a bit for a bit afterwards. All right, so um, your video should be a walkthrough of your code, slides, screenshots, voiceover, or live action. Basically, it doesn't need to be a big walkthrough. Uh, it doesn't need to be a technical uh, walkthrough more like hey this is my project and this is what it what it is uh we're not we're, when i'm talking about like a walkthrough i'm talking I, uh, ideally three minutes and no more than five because remember i got to go through all of these right so three minutes per project is about ideal so um so if you go less than three minutes that's also fine it doesn't have to be three minutes long aim for like two to three minutes you know it's, it's not, it's, you don't really need to go, it's less, you're not so much demoing me your code as showing me your, demoing me your product, right? Whatever you produced. Now you can upload that however you want. Um, YouTube's generally the easiest way. Um, all right. Um, and again, you'll want to include the URL of your video um, uh, just to make sure we can find it. Right, because if you can't find it, if we can't find a video presentation of it because you didn't tell us where it is, you're not going to get a grade for it. Right, it's how we know that you did something. Um, so, and that brings up the question of how do I record something, and I'll get into that in a second. Okay, there's a couple of easy ways to do that. So, um, include anything. So, include anything you want to say, like about some uh, that you need to. So. It's a general overview. Anything in more detail goes into the README file. We are very interested in what challenges you encountered in coding. And if you found a way to go around them 
or overcome them. Uh, we understand that it's not, I don't know if GitHub has a video upload option. That's why I say that YouTube, generally because YouTube also has an embeddable player and you can just link to it. So we understand it's not possible to complete your original vision. We're interested in how you responded in the face of adversity. We're interested in the journey, not the destination. Uh, the guidelines for an A is that it amuses me for a minute, amazes me, or makes a positive impact to the world, no matter how small. Okay? So it's not really like big, big there. And as long as you've tried, you will most likely get a passing grade on this. Um, failures are essentially reserved for people who scramble at the last minute and just turn, turn and cobble something together. And hopefully with the progress report requirements that we've done, uh, there shouldn't be any of that not having a fully completed project is probably a B, but having something that mostly works. That really give out mainly A's for these. Most students earn A's. Okay. The main thing is to, I want to see how you perform under pressure and see what you learn and to see that you, 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 that A, it's a big world out there, but you're more than capable, more capable than you think you are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Submit a GitHub link, and then, and then, like, if you link to if you link to GitHub, and then your videos link to from GitHub, that's pers perfectly fine. Okay. Right. If you submit a link to both, if you submit a t if you just submit a text file that has a GitHub link and a link to your video, that's also fine. If you submit a text entry that has URLs to both of those things, that's fine. If you just submit a, a README file that has a link to your GitHub repository with the README file on it, and and the you and and uh, the YouTube link or the link to where we can find the video, wherever it is on Google Drive, whatever. It's fine. Just making sure that it's easy and obvious for us to find. Okay, does that make sense? So. Um, so this is about, I think I put 10% of your grade, I think, but um, it shouldn't be too bad. Now, remember, uh, if you encounter any issues that you can't submit it by the deadline, it's 1% off per minute late. Sorry, not point, sorry, 0.1% per minute late. So if you submit an hour late, it's going to be, you know, six points off. So please don't turn it in late because uh, I don't grant extensions for this. And unless there's like an extremely extenuating circumstance and that most likely would have been brought up earlier or like something that is like immediately extenuating. All right. Yes. So if I'm reading like a file for, for like my code. So do I put that in like a same folder in the GitHub? Yeah, sure. In the README? If you want, if you, yeah, you could do that. Like let you know that like, hey, these files should just stay in it. Cause can you make like a same, like the folder the same way on GitHub yeah. as you, okay. Yeah, you can, you can arrange GitHub to be, have folders, whatever you want. And when I clone it, it will have the exact same folder. Right, awesome. I'm not generally going to be running your projects. I'm generally going to be watching your videos and just click looking at your code. Okay. Cause time constraints, you know, Makes sense. so all right, your proposal is not the same as the readme. The readme is like, so what is a readme file? Readme is basically the instructions uh, on how to run your code. If it's not immediately obvious. So like, oh, this requires these packages that you need to download, right? Basically, the, the things that I'd need to get your code working if I needed to check it. And then any kind of difficulties that you may have had or any kind of statements you want to make. The regex is extra credit. Uh, you can, yeah, uh, the file submission can be any... Uh, on any repo you want, but ideally the same as the progress check would be great. Uh, the regex was extra credit and yeah, we cannot just submit a, yeah, I want, I want the code to be hosted on GitHub. 
the code needs to be hosted on GitHub. Let me clarify that. Let me go ahead and clarify for, uh, for that. Final project. Please submit your code. A link to your GitHub repo your code is hosted you sh should ah one to two minute video there we go yeah so should submit a must also submit this Video can be uploaded to Canvas or submitted to or linked to elsewhere. So There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, those are some great questions there. Okay, so no, if you if you okay, so let me go through these in turn. So, uh, what if the code uses files like images that need to be in the same folder to run properly? Submit those in those those should be included in your GitHub because your GitHub you should be. The entire point of GitHub is that you can check it out and open it up on another computer and it works, right? Assuming you've got the same libraries that, that you need if, if they're in Python. How do you want us to cite co code? I, uh, I, um, I would include that in your README, but, ideal, but ideally cite it where you use it in your source code, okay? Um, how to record a YouTube video where you can record your own screen. I'm going to get to that. And somebody says, I need it. I'm using an API key. No, you can keep your API uh, key private. When you upload it to GitHub, just like put in a insert your, instead of like saying, hey, variable equals AP, whatever your API key is, like put in maybe insert your API key here. Would a project that would otherwise get an A receive a lower grade if they didn't accomplish anything as planned? Yeah, yeah, but it might still be in it, but it's there's still a good chance that it would be an A, depending on what the final project is. Right? Yep. So, yep. And now that um, Amul has gone to the next point. So there's two easy ways to uh, record your... Um, to do recording, okay? The first is the tool you're currently using, Zoom, okay? And it's probably the easiest. All you have to do is on is that there is an option to record your meetings, record it to your own computer, and then just basically start sharing your screen and then record that, uh, and then just start a recording and stop it when you're done. That's it. What if you're, yep. What if our code uses other files like images? They have to be, then include them in your, in the GitHub. Include them in, in your GitHub uh, submission. Yep, there are a bunch of screen recording options. Uh, there, 
so if I stop sharing for a second, right, to look. So if you look at the bottom of your of your Zoom session, there is a button near the share screen that allows you to record stuff if you are the host of the meeting. Okay, so you'll want to start a new Zoom meeting on your own. Make sense? Okay, so Zoom is, but using Zoom to record your screen is probably the easiest way aside unless there's some built-in tool you already know. The other way, which is a bit more, uh, which is a bit more, only slightly more involved is that you can use OBS. You can just go to OBS project. Dot com, OBS Studio. This is open broadcasting software. It's the software that's basically used by a ton of Twitch streamers and YouTube streamers. Uh, it's free. And it's a bit more involved, but you can do it. Um, if you search my YouTube channel, I do have some tutorials on how to use this. Okay. But this is the other good option. There are plenty of ways, but Zoom is probably your easiest option because you can just share your screen and that's it. You're done. Make sense? All right, so next question, which is overall grades. Okay, so I'm gonna do the um, another run through of of all the of all the runestone stuff, uh, and I'll import everything after quiz after the twenty third after I grade quiz six. If there's any issues after that, let me know. Um, otherwise, um, with regards to the how how everything is calculated, right? Um, the, so how do things? How do you get? What is your final grade going to be? So the way I work is that I don't curve raw scores, but I do curve the ranges. So typically, what happens is that basically, um, if you get a ninety and above or an eighty or above, those are guaranteed A's and B's respectively, right? You get an at least a, you get a ninety or above, you're guaranteed an A. You get a the, nothing is going to change about that. Typically what happens if I need to, is that if you're bumped up a grade, then that's like, then that will probably be a minus. So like what's happened to previous semesters is that like 88 and a half is like the cutoff range for an A minus. So 88 and a half, anywhere in the 88, 89 ranges were A minuses and 87s were B pluses. What runestone assignment should be in Canvas at the moment? The ones that are currently listed. Um, although this one is an in-class exercise, so that should be moved to other category. So the, um, but if you need a more up-to-date view on what you have in Runestone, check out your, uh, you know, Runestone account. The lowest, so the lowest lab that gets dropped. So let's see. Um, so I have two rules. For here, I drop the lowest lab, but I don't drop the pig lab because it was worth more than the others. Okay, and that happens automatically. Um, so how do I calculate what those cutoff points are? Well, uh, so what happens if you have got 100 on every other lab except for pig? Uh, then it calculates the best kind of thing to do for your score, but uh, but basically you'll you'll be missing a few. Should we have a grade on pig lab and pig Latin and labs? I have to go through and enter the grade the grades. I will do so. Are the runestone assignments due today? No, they're due Monday. That is where when I'll run the last grading batch on them. Um, when is the last day to demo RebGex? It, if you have to turn it in by the 25th, if you need to demo it after that, I will make time for you to demo it to, with me. Solo exercises are worth 5%. How do you double check? 
Um, if you go to your assignments on Runestone, you can check individual the individual grades. We I dropped the lowest quiz grade. As noted here, one rule dropped the lowest score for quiz. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so how do I calculate the range for the grade net now? Typically what I do is that I will, Laser, can you do that yourself? What? All right. Yep, in class solo exercises are due Monday. Those are mostly the runestone stuff. All right. So, what? Excuse me one second. Sorry about that. Okay, so how I calculate these are, um, is basically I sort. What I do is I is that once I get the final grades in, I sort the grades from highest to lowest without looking at who's got them. And what I do is that I basically say, okay, so we've got like ninety one point two, ninety. We've got a ninety one point two. We've got a, a nine. D.7, uh, 90.2, for example, 89.9, Say and say that's the example. Basically, I basically at that point I noticed that basically there's not really huge gaps between any of these scores, but there's a much there's like a nice big point gap between these two scores. Um, and this is what typically happens that I get something like this. And so typically what happens is that the is that these scores become A minuses, this becomes a B plus, and the and here's a B. That's essentially how I go through it. I figure out, um, I basically try to cur curve it towards the student's advantage and, and where it seems the fairest. The same process repeats for the scores in, this, in, the, in the high 70 range. Um, were the averages for the finals on the previous year? I don't recall. Um, it, overall, students, if you follow the if you follow the rubrics, it 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 works fairly well. Um, the and that as far as grading harshly or not, that's all on the. I that's why I have the rubric so I can grade fairly, um, so that I can follow my rubric and make sure that I am allotting points correctly. Um. And, and unfortunately, I don't. I, I just haven't. I don't really have a good way of getting the data for the averages because the uh, because I had a boatload of people who decided to try to cheat on the final exam uh, last year, and that really mixed the average up. That was very painful. So, okay. Any other questions with regards to the um, with regards to the final exam? Or I will send out the information for the final exam again this uh, this weekend or this week. 
I, we can talk, but the quiz has had very hard deadlines, unless there's like some extremely extenuating circumstance. Um, so, okay. So with, so why don't I go ahead and talk about the last prop, the, the first problem on the final exam that, uh, that we still, that I was going to go over. Okay. All right, so here we go. So Canvas and we're gonna go to all courses again and we're gonna go to Spring 2021. Quizzes. Um, no, I'm not going to send out Google Forms for five and six. I've gone through quiz five. If you still have issues with quiz five, please email me because I went through and hand graded everything. It's possible I missed it or I made a mistake. So if you have concerns about that, please email me. Uh, same with quiz six. I'm going to go and manually grade those as well. Because with quiz five and quiz six, there were some, uh, with quiz five especially, some of the questions had interpretations or, you know, the grade, the grader broke if the, um, the grader gave a very low score if you forgot to move, uh, deal with punctuation, which it really was only in, in my view. And so I went through and gave only a point off if you missed punctuation stuff. So anyway, so let's take a look at the, at this, uh, at this one. All right. So suppose you work for InsureCare, a healthcare uh, company, a health insurance company with a completely soulless name. Your only solace while working at this company is you suspect the large man in the cubicle, cubicle next door might be a retired superhero. Edit a copy because I need to change this for one second. Okay, and I introduced this problem last time. Okay. So you, anyway, you need to release some emails, but you wanna make sure things are properly redacted. Write a script or a function that given a file name, reads the contents of the file and creates a new file with all the patient ID numbers redacted. InsureCare's patient ID numbers look like these examples. THX dash, and then a bunch of numbers, A, N, dash, and a bunch of numbers separated by dashes. Ace and a bunch of numbers and separated by dashes. Specifically, our numbers begin with a two or three character alphabetic part followed by a 12 digit numeric part. The alphabetic part and the numeric part must be separated by a dash. Additionally, 12 numeric digits will either be grouped together or separated into three groups of four digits separated by dashes. So you can see that that basically that we've got three parts. We've got num we've got we've got the letters, the dash, and then the numbers. Furthermore, the numbers can have uh, two more dashes between them, separating it into the twelve into three groups of four. So I give you an example input and output file. So if we read in this input file which I hosted on GitHub, by the way, I will get this output file. So here's our input file. And the way we can just, and we can just download that by right clicking on the, on the link, on the link and saving it or over here, just simply saving it, put it on my desktop. And there we go. It says we saved InsureCare input. We don't really need to download the output. We just see how it's changed. I will put the link to this file in the chat into the chat, but I'll put a, there's a link to the file. Okay, so there's the link to the file. Um, 
you can da- you can download this um, and work with it alongside me if you want to. But again, when you download a file, you need if you're if you're programming, it needs to be in the same place you're going to be doing your your programming. So here I put it on my desktop and my and my file over here, question one, is also going to be on the desktop. Make sense? So, okay. So first thing I need to do is, well, actually let's look at the rubric to see what I'm aiming for. Because again, the rubric gives you a guide, is not only a guide for you, it's a guide for me. The rubric, five points for reading the file. 10 points for correctly identifying InsureCare's patient ID numbers, five points for successfully writing a file, and 10 points for removing or redacting the numbers for the new file. Okay. Well, I know how to read a file, so why don't I just go and get those five points, you know, tucked away real easy. Open the file name. So actually, it says given a file name. So it's an example input file. So def. Um, redact IDs. We'll take give it a file name, and we'll pass and and when, when I work on this, I will just simply say, "Hey, redact IDs, ensure care, input dot txt." Now, mind you, what I care, I don't really care about this. I care about what we're going to be writing here. So now let's go ahead and open it. Uh, open the file. File name. Read mode. Okay, text is equal to open and then uh, print text.read. All right, well, that's five points squared away on the final exam. And then uh, let's see the bookend, right? We read it, five points for writing to a new file. Okay, so um, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'm gonna be, I don't wanna make decisions. I'm gonna let the user make the decision. Output file. I'll call it the out name. And then what we're going to do is that I'll say output.txt, right? Don't want to make decisions. So I'll read it in. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I will say contents of the file is equal to text. Dot, yeah, why don't we rename this a bit? Why don't we just simply do this as I'll call this file, and then I will call text is equal to file.read. That makes sense. Those names make sense now. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is uh, do magic removal stuff. Okay. And we're going to create an output. Okay. So we're going to put um, output text is equal to so here I'm just putting in some test string. Obviously, this will have to get replaced or deleted when it's actually working, but I want those other five points. Output text. So do the magic removal stuff and then open. Let's write this out name because that's where it's going to go dot um sorry out name and then we're going to do write mode okay output dot write out out right and now um this is the writer and then a uh, writer dot write write to to so we create a fo- an output, fo- you know, actually I'll call it out, yeah, writer dot write. We can call it whatever, I called it writer today. 
but then we write whatever we want to put out. Output text writer dot close out name output file name. And so now I run it and now we notice that I get a new text file. This is going to be just be replaced by the answer. Okay, that's another five points. I've shown that I can read a file and write a file. Make sense? So now the other 20 points are, I have to correctly identify the insurance care's patient ID numbers, okay? So that either involves me writing a lot of if statements, like going through the file and write, okay, if it starts with, the, if it starts with three letters and then I get a dash, right but we can do but we can make this a bit easier by writing a regular expression for ourselves so let's create a, a variable called id regex is equal to and now we just need to figure out what the regular expression is for this so but we can also just start it we don't have to get the whole thing in one go because we can just start it because actually figuring out what the whole regular expression is probably the hardest part. But, um, but we know, so we, what do we know about this? What can I easily say that's uniquely identify about, about this rather than any other string? Well, I can't just do three uppercase letters because there's a lot of three uh, groups of three uppercase letters, but all the IDs start with three uppercase letters followed by a dash. And then, so, I can remove, so if I just, I focus on identifying that as my first step, then I can get, I can get some credit done right now and I can move on with, with the other part of my code. Okay, so why, why, why is that important? Because I'm trying to show that the way I try to structure things is that you don't necessarily have to finish all one part in order to continue with the other parts. Notice how I had the beginning and then I did the end and now we're doing the middle, right? You don't need to have every single part of this to be done. And it even works and compiles, right? Focus on what you can do. So, okay, how do I, so R for regex, right? That's technically stands for raw string, but whatever. So three letters. Um, so to do letter, I'm gonna do A to Z or A to Z. Technically, if I did this, by the way, those are, Alpha numerics. I will need to import RE at some point. Yes. But it's going to be very obvious when we when we when we need that. But we can write strings that are regular expressions that, without that. So um, so A to Z. A to Z. And we want three of those. And we want a dash after that. And then we can also, yeah, we'll just do that. Okay, so now, so that's the first part of, let me go ahead and move this over here. That's the first part of this of this part of the rubric, identifying the insurance care's patient ID numbers. But we can actually just go ahead and grab those other 10 points, 10 points for removing or redacting insurance care's patient ID numbers for the new file. Assume, so, Right, so finish this big message to myself. But once we figure out what the, once we actually figure out what that ID is going to be, it's not too hard for us to do this. In fact, I can do this in, I can do this in one line, import.re, right? I can get these 10 other 10 points in one line, which is output text is equal to re dot sub, right, to substitute. What is ID regex doing? Nothing yet. It's just going to be the regular expression that represents an ID. We, uh, right now it just, it, look, it, it will, if I put, throw it into a regular expression engine, it will find three letters followed by a dash. So re dot sub. And again, if you need, if you need to review your reg regular expressions, check the syllabus, 
you can find the automate the boring stuff. It's got an entire great chap um, that's free book, entire great chapter on regular expressions. So re.sub, so, and it takes in the pattern. So ID regex, then what I want to replace it with. And then what I'm going to be going through, which is I'm going to be reading the text. And that is it. I can remove this because I don't need this anymore. And now, and now what I, all I have to do is that I can go and we can go over here and we can see that Allison, Alice Allison, and now notice that it redacted the first bit of this over here in the middle. It redacted the TMX dash. So yeah, it's not done yet, but we just but we've racked up five, 10, 20 plus points, maybe 23, maybe, depending on once we finish the once we finish the regex, we're gonna be fully done. Does that make sense to everybody? Right? Because this will do the removal, assuming the regex works. So, okay. So let's get, so we have, um, so, okay. It is three, so the ID is, and I'll bring this over here, three letters followed by a dash. And then there's going to be 12 letters. So there's actually two ways we can do this, right? It's either going to be 12 letters. So now if I run this, sorry, sorry, not letters. So three letters in a dash, then followed by 12 numbers, not letters. So now if I open that file, doesn't delete this one, but it removed this one over here that met the, the format of, of everything. Sorry, that met the for well, format of it all glommed together. So again, there's, so that's, so it's, I, so again, we matched this first one, but not these other two. So there's two ways to go about doing this. The first is um, is to use the or function, and then just do some copy pasting. So it's either going to be three letters followed by a dash, and then twelve numbers, or three letters followed by a dash, followed by four numbers, followed by a dash, followed by four numbers, followed by dash, followed by four numbers, followed by a dash. Make sense? So this is one solution, one complete 30 point solution to this problem. And now it has deleted all of those and it doesn't delete this thing because that doesn't fit our format. Okay. Now the other way to do this one and an, equal, an equally valid way to do this one that might look a bit shorter to you and make more sense to you this way, because there's always a bunch of ways to write it, is to do three letters followed by a dash, followed by four letters, sorry, followed by four numbers, followed by an optional, right? That's what the question mean, mark means, an optional dash, followed by four numbers, followed by an optional dash. Does that make sense, the optional? And if we run this, we'll get the same output.
So again, if you if you went if you go through and learn your regular expressions, this becomes a lot easier to do. And again, on the final exam, it's going to be something like this. It's going to be something where I give you, hey, here is a bunch of num here is like uh, uh, a file with phone numbers. Why are we making the dashes optional? Because 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 sometimes we don't have dashes in between the numbers, like this one, THX 11381241234 So it either the, the 12 the 12 numbers either have a dash between them or they don't. So that's why the dashes are optional. Is there anything way to do it without regular expressions or no? It's gonna be much longer. Um and the way we would do that is, and I will, laser, I will get you uh, potato chips in just a second or in a minute. He's a bit literal minded. Please do not count. Uh, the, um, the way we would do that is we would say essentially for, uh, for index in text in range length of text okay uh car is equal to text index okay and then basically ask ourselves um let's see if car and there's a way to do this that's built into string that's a bit easier but I'll just write it out over here if car um so let's go with and create uh letters is equal to a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t v W, X, Y, and Z. Turn that into a string. And yes, I know I have to do capitals as well. Um, so okay, there we go. If car, so if actually we should probably do it just like this. If text index in letters. All right. I missed that. So malicious Mallory has two letters. Right. So the way we fix that is two or three letters. That's what happens when you talk and work at the same time. Okay, so that will do two or three and that will catch the second case, A-N. So if text index is in letter, in letters and text index plus one in letters and text index plus two in letters if text index plus four equal equals a dash and so on and so forth. You kind of get the idea. So you can do it with these, right? And then you'd want to go through the two possibilities of being this, except there's like two branches here. It's either two or three, right? There, but there's some logic, but there's logic we can use here, right? 
But again, it's much easier if you just simply use, if you just simply use uh, regular expressions, it becomes a lot easier and a lot simpler. A lot of string manipulation stuff becomes so much easier when you use regular expressions. All right, so I will be right back. I'm going to open it, okay? Okay. So, overall, this, um, this did not take that many lines of code. Five points for two lines, five points for three lines. You know, one line worth 10 points and another line worth 10 points. If you know how to do regular expressions, it makes it a lot easier. Um, otherwise you have to iterate through and it becomes a lot more difficult. You have to do output, you have to do the re.sub and you have to put that into output.txt. If you're not saving it into output.txt, you're not going to be doing it. So, and this code in general is short enough that I can just drop into chat. Which I'll do right now. Okay. So that is your, so again, this is what, I'll, what we'll be doing for the final exam um on on this let's see did i do the same problem last semester files physics final exam so this was i still have to rewrite it from last semester so build what did it look like last semester Yep, so I used the same idea, the same one last year. Uh, will the regular expression a question revolve anything other than redaction? Uh, usually not. Redaction is generally the easiest way for me to test reading and writing um, of a file. That's why I do redaction, because you can easily test reading and writing files. Um, So, so, because uh, finding all the things in something isn't nearly as interesting, I don't think. And it's a lot more, this, this gives us a much bigger, better use case. So alternatives to this problem that might happen is that I tell you to, you know, um, so things that I that won't be do, doing, it's like gonna be telling you to remove duplicate lines. That that that's not gonna generally work. But I will try to find something that I will try to come up with something that you can use uh, both regular expressions or if statements for. Whereas this one was a bit brutal if you tried to use if statements on. Um. All right. Other questions? OK, so let me be clear. The final exam will be in person, but you will be doing it electronically. OK? You cannot take the exam at home because I have to practice you, because I have to proctor you. Uh, same room as the normal class. Yes, is documentation for regular expression allowed? Yes.
And again, you can use the automate the boring stuff book that will have all the stuff, right? If you go to automate the boring stuff.com chapter uh, seven pattern matching with regular expressions. It's extremely useful chapter with code on on how to use on how to write regular expressions. He does it a slightly different way using matching objects using the re.compile function, but that's fine. It's a perfectly valid way to do it. So I went through yesterday what was allowed on the final exam and what isn't allowed. So, um, and I'll send out those details again in an announcement, but what the rules are is generally here. Let me go ahead and it will be some, I'll probably modify this clause, this clause up here a bit. Okay. Because yeah, let me actually pull up what I have for 2168 because that's because they've been doing it the same this way for a for a couple of for their past exams. So share for a second. Sorry, I have to scroll past and stuff. Build. Share screen. All right. The permissions and restrictions for the exam are as follows. Students can complete their code from uh, on their own devices or on lab computers or from computers that you can get from a kiosk. It's fine. No. Okay, let, let me go through and clarify everything. And then I'll get you the time and date. I don't know if it's during, I don't think it's during regular class time. I will double check. Students can complete the exam on their own devices using the lab uh, or on lab computers. Students may use any comp coding environment of their choosing, such as, but not limited to, IntelliJ, Eclipse, NetBeans, Atom, VS Code, and Vim. This was written geared towards uh, Java programmers, so I'd switch those out with Idle. Uh, quick question. Yes. Quick question. PyTrum is okay, right? Yeah. Cool. It's it's made by the same company as IntelliJ. So, so again, not it's such as but not limited to any coding environment of their choosing. Okay, if you if the exam is open note, the notes may be on. It, and by the way, if you if you're in the if you're in the situation where you can't do that, again, you got a editor right here. On, on runestone that you can use okay and yeah you might not be able to read the files but you probably won't need to yeah you can use the runestone readings right okay yes yes i'm all uh i just want to clarify so for the practice problems we just uh what do we have to do with that if we want to get more practice in for the monte carlo approximation um I would look at some children's games and like see how many dice rolls it would take to go across the um, uh, or other games of chance. All right, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll list some up. I'll list some example questions. I'm gonna list some example questions after I go through this for Monte Carlo. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Brandon, send me an email. Um, if if you've already sent me one, I'm sorry. Again, I have to catch up on a bunch of emails because I get really. All right. I will upload the videos uh, and the code for the, for the earlier one, okay? So let me go through this. Students can complete their uh, exam on their own devices or on lab computers. Students may use any coding environment of their choosing. The exam is open note. The notes can be on paper, any amount of paper in any form, including the textbook. Um, that's for if you have a physical textbook, the notes can be also be stored on the code. Uh, be notes or code shown on the student's computer or personal cloud, OneDrive, Google Drive, etc. Students may access any resource on the internet that is linked to from Canvas, such as my YouTube lecture videos or lecture recordings or my GitHub repository. That's not exclude. That's not an. That's a not all an all inclusive statement. So RuneStone, right? You can get to that from the front of 
you know, we can get to Runestone from from here, right? So yes, Runestone you can get to. Okay. Let's see. So students may not use resources on the internet that are not on their personal cloud nodes that are not linked to on campus. And the syllabus has a link to, so you can use Python built-in documentation because that's linked to on the syllabus, okay? Now, the main point of these restrictions is so you can't go to Stack Overflow or to Chegg or some website that basically we're, or Google the answers for some stuff, okay? I'm just trying, I, I have to put in restrictions so that the, the, I have to have a whitelist as opposed to a blacklist because in general, I, I need to have a way of preventing you from communicating with other people during the exam. So, okay. Now with regards to the other questions we went over to, over question two, right, was about sets and we went over set, uh, sets. Question two for uh, on that previous year was, hey, we've got this new situation, um, this new thing, how do I use it? Although this year is going to be, here's a program that runs Turtle. Please tell me what it does, right? Answer the questions in the code. It will be, it's, it's basically saying, hey, what do the, are these variables? What do they do? Okay. Question three will be a Monte Carlo approximation. I showed you the Raven game last time and how that had a six-sided die. Um, what are the other, what are some good Monte practice for Monte Carlo if you wanted to do practicing for Monte Carlo? Okay, so let's take a look at, at some ideas for practicing Monte Carlo, for practicing those, okay? Um, First off, poker is not a good uh, a good one. Why? Because if well, actually poker's okay to see who wins, but once you start putting in wild cards, it beca the coding becomes a huge mess. Um, so I would avoid poker, and instead I'd look at games like uh, blackjack. Blackjack is a good game to simulate for Monte Carlo because it has very clear rules about uh, about about winning and simpler strategies if you ignore things like having to split. So like blackjack, again, the game is you get de dealt two cards and the cards have certain values. Um, the deal, and so if you're, and you can either ask for more, for more cards or you can stay put. Um, and so the question is uh, like, if you say, okay, I'm gonna hold at 16 or over, no matter what, uh, do you win? The objective for blackjack, for those of you who don't know, is to be the quote to the get be the one who gets closest to 21 without going over it. So if you go over it, you lose. So that's kind of the risk. It's kind of a game of chicken there. Do I keep asking for more cards? Right. Um, and so that game can be simulated fairly well. Snake and ladder could be good for Monte Carlo because uh um you just have to would pro program in the way to do, it'd be definitely be practice because it'd be harder than what I would be giving you because for Monte Carlo, you'd be having to, um, you know, ex you know, you'd, you'd have to program in the skips for st sneak and ladders, but yes, sneak and ladders is definitely a great idea for Monte Carlo. So blackjack uh, shoots, slash snakes and snakes and ladders. Those are those are good ones. Uh, let's see. Um, if you play a collectible card game like Magic the Gathering, then that would be a good uh, suggestion, like uh, figuring out like the chances of having a good opening hand. Um, let's see. Um, okay. In fact, let's go over, um, I'm not familiar with Ludo, 
but I'm going to go over one last one. Okay. Going to go over one last one at, uh, with the time we have left. So give me one second. I'm going to find it. And this is an exceptionally good one, I think. Okay. And I definitely should have gone over it before, but I didn't get the chance. I can, it slipped my mind. Um, okay, apparently it wants me to sign in. Okay. Authenticator, sorry. Eight, seven, nine, four, three, one. Now this one is a very good one. I know I still have to, sh I'm, I'm not sharing it yet. Um, but this one's an exceptionally good one because of just, it, it's well-researched. And so you're, uh, you'll be able to see what the um, statistics are for it quite easily. Um, so not that one. Okay. No, that's not it. It's going to practice. Okay. Here we go. I found it. Um, Sabrina, I can, uh, I don't have that code. I can, uh, I can, I can talk to you and walk you through a solution. So, all right. So here we go. So the outcome of any fair coin toss has an equal chance of landing on heads or tails. If I were to toss this coin three times in a row, Okay, there are a, to there are a total of e equally out probable outcomes, right? Because you have two to the, th that, that's, there's two outcomes for the first one, two outcomes for the second, two outcomes for the third, two times two times two, two to the third, right? That's eight possible outcomes. This isn't the, this isn't the, the tricky part, okay? There's eight possible outcomes, right? Head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, 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 head, head, and so on and so forth. H is head, T is tails. So if you HHT represents two heads in a row followed by with the third coin being a tail, right? So head, tail, head is different from head, tail, uh, head, head, tail. All right. So suppose Professor Rosen, me, challenges you to a coin flipping game for $100. You're going to choose one of these sequences, uh, uh, one of these eight sequences from above such as head, head, tail. And Professor Rosen will choose one such as tail, head, head. One of you will keep flipping a coin until one of our three flips will occur. And whoever's sequence shows up first wins. So for example, if we flip coins until one of the chosen se example sequences occurs, a few games might look like this. A uh, head, then a tail, then a head, then a tail, then a head, then a tail then a head and a head. Tail, head, head was my sequence. That came up first, so I won. Um, head, head, tail. Your sequence came up first, so you win. I flip tail, tail, head, tail, head, head. I win. My sequence came up first. And then I flip the coins. Head, head, head. I keep getting a, a bunch of heads. And then you get a, I get a tail, and you win. So this seems like an equally fair bet on the surface of it, because the outcome of three, the, all eight outcomes of flipping these coins are equal. But you remember that Professor Rosen once mentioned he was sorted into Slytherin and is a bit of a trickster. So he probably wouldn't be challenging you unless he was sure he was gonna win. 
So let's write a program on the next page to simulate this game to see if your professor is trying to scam you. Okay. So the idea here is um, basically we will choose. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, and this is called Penny's Game. If you want to learn about it, you can look it up. Um, it's a very, very famous scam uh, uh, game because it's got a very easy trick for that anyone can learn on how to, how to break it. So let's go ahead and I will provide myself with a function, right? So the, the goal was write a program that simulates the game on the previous page with one player trying to get head, head, tail and the other trying to get tail, head, head. So what we're gonna do is we are going to do def um, um, def game and it's gonna take in uh, sequence one and sequence two call and let's see we'll need to import random so i'm going to work very fast on this one uh def we're flipping a coin here so def flip gives us either um it will return random dot choice of your either share isn't on professor really darn it okay Random dot choice head. Random dot choice tail. So we got this, right? Flip this. Okay, we've got two games. So I've got my choice of flip of doing one of those two coin flips. Okay. Uh, so what we're gonna do is um we will. So the first thing we need to do is that. We need to flip at least three coins, okay? So, um, flips is equal to flip. Okay, so four, four I in range three. flips is equal to the empty string. And what we're gonna do is that we will say, hey, we've got flips is equal to plus equal to flip. So we get th at least three of them. So but what we care about is the three most recent flips, right? And so what we're gonna do is say, while, um, so, Actually, we can, you know what? No, we don't have time. So while the, um, the flips from of the last three to the end, so the last three, the last three things of flips are not equal to, I'll change it for you in about five minutes, laser. It's not equal to S1 and flip and it's not equal to s2 okay so why is it like this well basically all i'm doing is checking if the last three match the first sequence or the second sequence and if it's not then we have to add another flip okay and that and once it stops somebody won And if we'll return S1, it will return true if S1 won. If S1 won. If plus, if S3 is equal to player one's sequence. I will turn it on for you in a minute, Laser. I'm almost done with class. So now we can go to trials. Trials is equal to 100,000. Four in range trials. So wins is equal to zero. If flips, sorry, if game 
and it was head head tail for the first person and professor rosen was playing with tail head head so if that returns true then wins plus equals one print wins divide by trials expected colon and we get that the player has a 25 percent win rate which means that professor rosen wins 75 percent of the time Like I said, game's a scam. Try programming this one yourself. It is excellent practice. Okay, now why is that? Um, this is a game called Penny's Game. Okay, uh, there's a number of great video explaining this. But the idea here is that if the second chooser is that the second person who chooses the sequence can always uh, can always put put a put down a sequence that trumps the first player sequence by basically say by basically doing the following. If you do if if you you make your choice of the first coin, the second coin, and the third coin, all player has to has to do to have an advantage is say whatever the is not the second coin followed by the first coin, your first choice and your second choice. So he clones your first choice and your second choice and flips your second choice and puts it in front of your uh, those other ones. And that will trump anything the other person does. So, um, so yeah. But again, Looking at games that basically uh, have this kind of that that are basically that have scams are or or the like are, are a great resource. All right. So we are in the last minute, and I just want to say that I'm very proud of all the progress you have made during this class. You have worked a whole lot, and I've seen that. I know that this semester has been a very weird and stressful one and that it has been kind of wild because of all the stuff going on in the world. Plus there's still a pandemic going on, you know, it, even though um, that I am actually going to work on uploading uh, the backlog of all the lectures right after we get off this uh, call. So, um, so yeah, I am. So I, I am very impressed with the work you have all done. And I can't wait to see all your final projects. Um, and I wish you best of luck on your exam. Um, I promise I'll try to make it as comprehensive, but as fair as possible. I'm not going to make it. I can't say I'm going to make it easy because. But I've shown you what's going to be on the exam as as best as I can. All right. And with that, class is dismissed. Uh, doctor, can I talk yeah. to you about the final project? Sure. Okay. Yeah, you have Thanks, a good Professor. One. You have a good one. Thanks again. Mm -hmm. Thanks again, Professor. All right. I sent you the email about me having to change my project. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, you sent and you sent a follow up email, and you said you are almost you already have a lot of stuff done for that. Yeah. Okay, that's fine then. Okay, so should I resubmit yes. my everything, right? Yes, because of your specific uh, thing. Preposal, proposal, and progress report. Mm -hmm. Yep. OK, thank you. Um, I will run the root uh, grader. Uh, the exam is three questions. The, um, there's there's three, question, three actual questions on the exam. The last question is just to uh, upload. I will be right back. I need to turn on. I need to switch the TV program for my child. And then,
downstairs get your car. Okay. All right, Kazari. What's up, uh, Professor? Oh, just a quick question. Um, so just to make sure.